Hello and good day, geometry. We are starting unit seven, uh, which is going to be about quadrilaterals. Before that, we have to get something out of the way, uh, which talked about diagonals and then the interior angles of a general polygon. We talked about diagonals way, way back in like PO7, um, but who can, uh, what is the diagonal of a polygon? We all reference diagonal with like a diagonal line, okay? but it's more than that in the geometric sense. What is the diagonal of a polygon? Anyone else? This will show up on your map test uh, when you take it in a couple of weeks, so topical, okay? The diagonal of a polygon is a segment connecting two non-adjacent um, points on a polygon. A segment connecting two non-adjacent points on a polygon. Last unit, we talked about the word adjacent in the context of sine, cosine, tangent. Adjacent means next to, so what would non-adjacent mean? If adjacent means next to, non-adjacent would mean, Joey? Not next. Not next. Two, right? So if we're looking at the diagonals of these figures, if I start here, okay, my first diagonal would not be down this segment connecting it to the next point. It'd be going straight down to that one. Now, is that a vertical line? Well, kind of. Uh, yes. Okay, that's okay. These won't all be in a diagonal shape as you think about the word diagonal. The word diagonal in this sense is just any segment connecting two non-adjacent points. So from that first point, there are two diagonals that can be uh, drawn because any other segment connecting points will be connecting adjacent points, right? So I go to my next point, and I can draw a diagonal down here. I can draw a diagonal right there, right? Two non-adjacent points and segments connecting them. If I go down one more, I've only drawn the diagonal, you know, going up, straight up to that point up above it, so I'm not going to redraw that. The only diagonal I can draw here is going to that point there. Okay? And then from the last point here, I've already drawn both diagonals that can be drawn, and so there's nothing more I can do. So to answer the question, how uh, many does each figure have? This figure has one, two, three, four, five. Diagonals. Following so far? Yeah? Okay. For the next figure here, and we'll start kind of this uh, upper right spot. I skipped the first point because that's adjacent to it. My first non adjacent point, I can draw a diagonal to is right here. And I can go straight down to that one all the way across to that one, across to that one, and over to there. Okay. From my next point, can't go straight down because that connects it to an adjacent point, right? I can connect the segment from this point to that one, and that one, that one, straight across, and up. Okay. And we can kind of start to look for patterns here, right? We can see that there are five green ones that I could draw, could, could draw, that I could draw, and there are five red ones. If I go to my next point here, how many diagonals do you predict I can draw from here? Blake? Four. Why only four? Because you already have one now. Because now I start to repeat them. I don't repeat any with the very next point because that's adjacent. I didn't have a diagonal going there to start with. But now at this point, see, I've already got that green one going back, back up. So from here, I can draw one, two, 
three, four. Right? There are four new ones I can draw from that point. And these patterns are very helpful because what are you starting to notice within our polygon here? Pretty chaotic? Yeah, especially for those of you that aren't using color, right? It, it, if I ask you to count off all this di di diagonal, it would be very difficult to do. So patterns are important. Um, how many diagonals can you predict? How many new ones can I draw from that black point there down at, down at the bottom? Peter? Three. Three new ones, right? I'm at the point now where I can got two of them that are already connected, one red and one green. So there are three new ones I can draw. One, two, three. I can't go to that one because I've already drawn one green. I can't go to that one. I've already drawn one in red. Okay. So um, I'll make another green point down here. How many new diagonals can I draw from that point following this pattern? Joe, Gino, warnings for each of you. I already talked talk to you once. Two of them. How many from this red point? One. And how many from each of these two new blue points then following the pattern? Zero, right? Five, five. And the reason why there's two fives at the start here is because those first two points are independent and that no diagonal connects them. There are five I can draw from the green point. Because I didn't draw one of the red points, because it wouldn't be a diagonal, I can draw five from the red, red point also. After that, you start to repeat. So five, five, four, three, two, one, and zero. Okay. Yes? Is there like a formula where you figure out? There is a formula. I'm not requiring you to know it, but it's out there. If you want to look up, look it up yourself. I don't know where it is off the top of my head, but if you want to Google that, then go right ahead. Okay. Uh, but anyway, so five, five, four, three, two, one. There are 20 diagonals within that figure. Okay. Questions on that? Okay. Um, a couple of new theorems, A1 and A2, both having to do with uh, the angles of a polygon. Okay? The polygon interior angles theorem, this formula I do require you to know. Okay? Uh, it says the um, sum of the interior angles of a polygon Can be found by taking 180 times n minus 2. Okay. 180 times n minus 2, where n represents. Anyone have a guess? Joey? Number of sides. Number of sides. Okay. The sum of the interior angles of a polygon is 180 times n minus 2, where n equals the number of sides. So for example, in a triangle, we all know how many degrees a triangle has, right? It is? 2, 7, 3, 6, 3, 11, 45, 20, 90, 2. I'm done, right? This is the end of me. Yeah. 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 This is the end of me. Uh, how many times have you talked about the number of degrees of a triangle? Okay, 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 okay. In all seriousness, the degrees of a triangle always 180. Okay? 180. 180. 180 times 3 minus 2, the 3 coming from the number of sides that a triangle has. 180 times 1 is 180. Okay? As we will learn shortly, and you probably already know this, the number of degree, well, I shouldn't say you probably already know after that disaster, but the number of degrees in a quadrilateral, a square, rectangle, any four-sided shape is? 360. 360. If we try this formula with a quadrilateral four-sided shape, right? Four minus two is two, times 180 gives us 360, right? So down here, when I ask you for the uh, sum of the interior angles of an octagon, you don't have to draw an octagon and try and put angle mirrors in there and it just use the formula, right? 180 times 8 minus 2. 
that eight coming from an eight-sided shape being an octagon. Okay? Now, be careful here because so many, a lot of times, you, if you make a mistake here, you take 180 times eight, you forget about that minus two part, it's actually 180 times six. Right? You subtract two from the number of sides and multiply that by 180. Okay? Um, the exterior angles of a polygon, let's get a polygon, we'll do a one, a two, three, four, and five. Good old pentagon there. Okay? If I extend each of these sides out, I'm going I'm to let you draw this first. So go ahead and, and, and draw this um, as close as you can to a pentagon. It doesn't have to be perfect because it works out to be the same for all, all of them anyway. But if I extend each of these sides, starting at one point and just tracing it and going outward, okay, and then from the next point, tracing it and going outward, just extending each side as I go around the polygon. Do it again here. Okay. And one final time here. What I've created here, folks, what I've created here are five exterior angles. Angle one, angle two, angle three, angle four, and angle five. If I had a six-sided shape, I would have created six angles. If I had a seven-sided shape, it would be seven angles, right? But the exterior angles theorem says that uh, the sum of the exterior angles of a polygon will always equal 360 degrees. Always. Exactly 360. So the interior degree measures change depending on how many sides the polygon has. The exterior degree measures will always be exactly 360. Okay. Now, why does this matter to us? Okay. Well, especially this formula here, we can uh, determine what type of polygon that we have. We kind of, kind of go both ways here. If we have the total interior angle sum, we can calculate what type of polygon it is. If we have the type of polygon, which is the first one, the octagon, we can then determine how many degrees are inside of it. So someone said, uh, what's 180 times 6, which is correct, from 8 minus 2. Where do we come up with? How many degrees are in an octagon? 1,080. 1,080. Okay. Why this matters, why you might care about this, is that if you were making a regular octagon, which remember what a regular octagon has. It has all congruent sides, all congruent angles. How could you very easily calculate the measure of each angle? If you know the sum has to be 1,080, you know there are eight interior angles. What's the measure of each angle? Hmm. 180, and you got that by taking... Well, there are eight angles here, right? So it wouldn't be 1,080 divided by 6. It would be 1,080 divided by 8, which should be like 120, 135. You sure? Yeah, you're right. Never mind. Yeah. Okay. So 135 degree angles. Okay. We can also use it if we know the sum of the interior angles of a polygon is 900. We want to classify it by its number of sides. What type of polygon do we have here? Well, using this, this formula, if we know the sum is 900, that means that 900 is equal to 180 times n minus 2. And you have that equation to solve here. Okay. 
Dino, I implore you to pay attention to what's going on, going on here. If I have to stop class again, remind you, we'll be going home with a souvenir. Okay. We could do a song parody. You know, you know who the Beatles are, right? Yeah. Not yes. They have a song called Yellow Submarine. Yes. Yeah. We could do a parody for a Yellow Souvenir. Yeah? Of course. Yeah. Sing it. I don't know all the words to it, but I can look them up. Uh, okay. So to solve this, uh, you might start by dividing both sides by 180, uh, which I believe is 5. So 5 equals n minus 2. Parentheses drop off now because you don't need them anymore because you, re you removed the coefficient to the expression. So they can drop off. So add 2 to both sides. And we get uh, a 7-sided polygon, a peptagon, or a septagon. Either one. We already talked about that. That's just a mistake. Okay. Questions on this? Hey, uh, going forward, folks, what is the value of x? How would you set this up to solve it, Blake? Don't give me the answer. But how would you set this up? Okay, so kind of like when we know the degrees of a triangle, we can track 180. We'd start with 360. Basically, we know that 360 has to equal the sum of 89 and 67 and x and 2x, right? Our theorem states that the sum of the exterior angles of the polygon uh, will be 360. So the sum of those four angles will be 360. Blake's strategy is to subtract 89 and 67 from 360, and that leaves us uh, equal to x plus 2x. Right, which we can simplify to be 3x, and then you're kind of home free from there. Okay? So just a couple of theorems uh, that are going to help us work with polygons, specifically this unit, quadrilaterals, as we uh, get a little bit deeper. So 8-1, uh, I didn't see what section this is. Your homework for tomorrow. Yeah. Your opportunity for the number game tomorrow. Oh, on page 510, I would like you to do 3 through 16. Three through sixteen, and then page five thirteen. I'd like you to do thirty nine to forty one. A little bit of review of parallel lines and corresponding angles and alternate interior and all that sort of stuff. Okay. Oh, more. All right. And. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, uh, seven through ten. There's more I could give. <laughs> These are all due tomorrow. We've got seven minutes to work on them now. Have a good rest of your day.